The Bengals have new faces, both at running back and wide receiver. Which position is more concerning going into training camp? Plus, I talk one-on-one -on -one with Zach Moss. Joe Burrow is in the Hamptons with Tom Brady and much, much more right now on Enter the Jungle. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Rapine. He is Andrew Fox Miller, and this is Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Make sure you grab a garage beer and watch us every single Tuesday at 8 Eastern right here on CBT. Also weekly on Bally Sports. We're probably part of the Big Play Network. And Andrew, we are getting ever so close to training camp. It is right around the corner. It is this month, and we will obviously have you covered all season long right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And one of the things, Andrew, that uh, the Bengals did this offseason was revamp their running back room, revamp their wide receiver room behind Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And that's where we're going to start today's show. The biggest concern or the bigger concern out of the two, running back where Zach Moss replaces Joe Mixon and Chase Brown is obviously going to have a, a much bigger workload or expected to have a much bigger workload this year or wide receiver three, where Tyler Boyd leaves as well. Just in general, which one would you say is a bigger concern right now in the middle of July here as we get closer and closer to training camp? I would say certainly the bigger question, so we'll call it concern, is going to be, to me, wide receiver three, identifying the wide receiver three. Who's that person that is going to be reliable, that's going to make big plays, that is going to kind of take that next step on that offense. And I say that simply because I feel like at running back, I mean, we know what we have here for the most part. Sure, Chase Brown, he's got to kind of prove himself with more snaps and playing a bigger role in the offense. I get that. But as far as skill set and what we know they're capable of and we've we've seen, we kind of have what we need. Sure, we don't have a P. Ryan replacement per se, but everyone in that backfield is capable of doing – I think what they need for this offense, whereas wide receiver three, I, 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 that's, that, that, that may take time, maybe more time than we're comfortable with. The, the reason why this, to me, is a good question at wide receiver, there's a bunch of guys. And at, at running back, there's two guys. And I, I think at, at best you feel really, really confident in two guys. That doesn't mean I don't like Travion Williams or Chris Evans or insert whatever running back not named Zach Moss or Chase Brown. But we expect it to be the, the Chase Brown, Zach Moss show, Zach Moss, Chase Brown show. At wide receiver three, no one knows. Andre Yosefash doesn't know. Trent Irwin doesn't know. Uh, Jermaine Burton certainly doesn't know. And, and neither does Charlie Jones. And it's because all of those guys are battling for snaps behind Jamar Chase and C. Higgins. So it's now on one hand, you have these these two guys that we know are going to get a ton of carries. And I think Zach Moss, and I'll talk with him coming up in just a few minutes, He's, he's going to be that steadying presence. And to me, he's almost, just to continue to bring the parallels together, he's almost like the, the Boyd-like steady presence that you, you want just in running back form. And he's going to be able to bring that to you right now. A high-end pass blocker. He can run between the tackles. All of the questions you have about Chase Brown, the pass blocking, the, the goal line, short yardage stuff that we just haven't seen enough of because he just didn't get a ton of cares last year. Well, we know Zach Moss can do those things if called upon, when called upon, and I think that'll happen a lot. With Chase Brown, you're banking on him to be that home run hitter. He was the second fastest ball carrier in the NFL last season behind DK Metcalf. I think those two guys you feel really good about, and you just wonder what's behind them, and you question what's behind them. Meanwhile, wide receiver, I think you feel good about all four of those guys I just mentioned. We just don't know how it's going to play out. So I, I do think that it's – an interesting dynamic. Bigger concern? Well, I'm concerned about the running back depth, and I have questions about who will emerge at receiver, but I don't think either one is so glaring, assuming that Chase Brown and Zach Moss stay healthy. And that's fair. I, I, I'm looking forward to, with what you talk about, the Moss-Brown show in that regard, I, I think, or I expect, Brown, obviously, to get a, a significantly larger workload, but at the same time, Moss not needing to put in 80% of the carries or the snap. Like, we're, mm -hmm. it, who knows? It could be 65, 35, 
It could be 60-40 even, but that's a good thing. Moss isn't going to need to do everything all the time. And Chase Brown sounds like this offseason has been working on uh, working on the hands. You know, might be a force out of that backfield, catching passes. Could be interesting. It might be 55-45 Chase Brown. Ooh. Chase Brown might be. I, I'm just saying. like, I, it, I wouldn't be surprised. I, no, not at all. I, I think that's the, the question in the running back room is isn't are they going to be a committee because we know it is it's just what, what's the split going to look like right. and in wide receivers uh, certainly uh wide receiver three at least is it, certainly interesting from that perspective i think in a perfect world jermaine burton shines and forces his way onto the field andre yosavash shines and forces his way onto the field and whether that's in the slot or outside where jamar chase can move into the slot that's a question certainly a question we will be monitoring as uh, training camp gets here. But up next, let's stick with the running back theme. I caught up with Zach Moss and, and, and talked with him about getting acclimated to Cincinnati, about uh, adjusting to life in this offense, what he thinks about the offense following uh, an offseason program that I think was pretty darn successful. And so I'll chat one-on-one -on -one with Bengals running back Zach Moss coming up next. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Rapine, and we're part of the Big Play Network here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And let's get to my conversation with Zach Moss. He's one of the big new faces that the Bengals added in free agency. He's going to play a huge part in this offense. And who knows? Maybe he will carry the ball 65 uh, or 65% of the snaps like Andrew boldly predicted just now uh, with Chase Brown. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Andrew. But Let's get to uh, my conversation with Zach. Zach, you've just completed your first uh, off-season program here in Cincinnati. Minicamp just wrapped up. What, what have the past few months been like? It's been good, man. Just, you know, um, engraving myself in the team, getting with the guys, uh, specifically the running back room, um, obviously the offense and things like that. So it's been good just, you know, getting a chance to be a part of this team, um, kind of learning guys and just working together. Um, and learn the offense, which has been big. Uh, so just having a lot of fun, and you know, it's been real good so far. You join an offense that has some big names. Obviously, Jamar was here this week. Joe Burrow's been here throughout the offseason program. H how is how is that chemistry and getting getting to know these guys, knowing that they they've played at a high level in the past, and obviously you want to be a part of it. Yeah, uh, you know, these guys are the leaders on this team. You know, they've set a high standard for what this team is going to do and has done before and, you know, and what we want to get back to and things like that. So, um, you know, just seeing how they work, trying to get them the same page. as a guy like Joe, specifically you know, quarterback, running back tandem. You kind of got to know what he likes and what he doesn't like and things of that nature and just kind of fill out the offense and kind of get a vibe for that and things like that, especially, you know, coming into training camp and things about to get turned up a little bit more than what they were uh, these last couple months. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, getting a chance to play with guys like this at this high level, um, it pushes you to be better. Um, so definitely looking forward to that, getting in that heat of the battle with those type of guys and, you know, looking forward to seeing everybody respond at a high level. Are you settled now in Cincinnati? Or are you going to use this six, seven weeks to, to get settled ahead of training camp? Obviously, you signed in March. Yeah, no, I'm all settled in. Uh, yeah, yeah, all settled in. Uh, wife took care of that, handled all that, allowed me to come in here and just do what I got to do. Uh, but um, all settled in, and like I said, it's been real good just being part of the city and things like that now. I was talking to one of your teammates. I'm not going to say who. It was good stuff. Uh, he's on the defensive side of the ball, and he pointed over here. And he's pointed at, at you and Chase, and, and just he thinks that both of you guys are are going to complement each other really well, add explosiveness to this offense, and just be the complete backfield that they're looking for. Do you see that? Do you feel that? Even though it's seven on seven, and you're not, you know, you know, you're not doing much right now. Yeah, you know, you know we definitely are going to look real good. I think uh, we play off of each other. Um, you know, I just came from a tandem where I was in uh, Indy with a little bit of a one-two kind of a tandem thing going on there. Um, so, you know, I'm looking to take what I learned from over there, you know, playing with a guy like JT, bring it here, um, just to, you know, help us each other out with things like that and, you know, be as consistent as possible. You know, um, if I'm playing well or he's playing well, we're just trying to keep each other going and, you know, help each other see things on the field, continue to get better so that way we can execute at a high level. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think it's going to be real good. I'm looking forward to it come training camp. Um, so, I mean, I can't say much more than that. How has your game evolved 
over the years? I mean, last year you had so many explosive runs and long runs. What, what, what's changed? Has anything changed, or is it just opportunity? Just opportunity. This league is all about opportunity. Uh, I mean, I feel like I've been able to do what I've been able to do last year uh, before. Just was in a different type of situation in Buffalo. Um, so, you know, just staying ready has been the main thing, staying ready. Uh, so now when another opportunity comes around, I have to get ready. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to build off what I did last year. I uh, feel like I still got a lot more left to prove. This, season, this uh, league is all about proving yourself, reinventing yourself each and every season. So, you know, I'm looking forward to do that uh, in a very, very good offense. You mentioned very good offense. That was something when you were introduced that you, you mentioned as well. It was a, a, a drawing point to Cincinnati. What, what has stood out during the offseason program as you learn the offense and, and get more comfortable? Has, has anything stood out or surprised you about this offense? Nothing that I would have imagined. You know, I think just the, the attention to detail, uh, the emphasis on those type of things, which is allows you to be really good in this league. Uh, you can't be sloppy, and this team is far from sloppy. And, you know, obviously that starts from the top down. Um, and Joe does a great job. He's all about the fundamentals, uh, you know, about his work and things like that. So it's very infectious, and it carries on. So everybody, everybody wants to be able to play at a high level for him, um, which then you get the best out of, a, out of offense. So, like I said, Nothing that I wouldn't imagine when you watch. Okay, you got to think this team has a high level of efficiency and they are very detailed and they're very calculated in what they want to do. Um, so it's been good to kind of get now finally be in that and kind of see it. Um, so like I said, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be fun for sure. We mentioned the break and this is last thing. Do you have any big plans between now and training camp? Uh, no, no big plans. I'm going to celebrate my little dude's uh, first birthday this weekend. Um, get back out to Utah and get back with the family and do that. Um, besides that, just going to work, get ready to go for uh, this season. Well, I appreciate the time. We'll see you in training camp. Appreciate it, man. Really good stuff there from Zach Moss. And Andrew, I, I think he fits perfectly just listening uh, to him talk and not just in that interview chatting with him, but all the interviews he's done, his introductory press conference, I think he's a perfect culture fit. Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase in the Hamptons with Tom Brady and plenty of other stars. Yep, that happened, and we're going to get to it next on Enter the Jungle. Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase are certainly enjoying their time off with training camp just a few weeks away. They were in the Hamptons over the weekend for the Michael Rubin annual all-white party, and this is like the biggest party of the year, Andrew. I mean, every major, whether it's athlete or just star, TV stars, all these uh, different entertainers uh, are all there for Michael Rubin's party. This is Joe Burrow's second year there. Jamar Chase made the list this year. He also attended. Uh, what, what do you make of this? I think people, certainly here in Cincinnati, at least some Bengals fans get uncomfortable when they see Joe Burrow on this stage, and now you're seeing Jamar Chase on this stage. They were both in in Paris and for Fashion Week, and people look at all that, and I think it makes some people uncomfortable. What's your reaction when you see uh, two of the, the biggest stars now, I think it's safe to say, in the NFL uh, call Paycor Stadium home? Well, first of all, I don't know why you weren't there, James, and I feel like you're wearing black to take a stand against the fact that you did not get an invite. But actually, we, we might need some... We might need enter jungle white shirts. Maybe that's what we need to look into, by the way. I, Michael Rubin could certainly reach out to me if he if he tried to get a hold of me. I don't think it's it's that hard to do. So Okay. Yeah, would I go? Good. Of course I would go. <laughs> yeah, of I'm course just, you would go. Of course I would go. Just saying. Maybe a plus one. Maybe. It's your choice. <laughs> just Hey, uh look, it, th yeah, this <laughs> <laughs> No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Rubin, by the way, CEO of Fanatics, where everybody's seen the, his name in the headlines. I don't know why they assume everyone knows who he is, but there you go. First of all, I couldn't do it for, for what it's worth. Like I would be, my anxiety would be, would be through the roof, every possible stain that could happen. Do you think they just have like six backup shirts in their car? Or are they just cool enough where they're not even worried about it? How does that work? That's what I want to know. These are the questions that you should be asking in that locker room. Oh, it's easy. You just bring the stain spray. I, I have this stain spray that will get out any stain instantly. Wouldn't matter. Really? Yeah. They're, they're not paying me to plug it, so I'm not going to plug it here. I'll tell you what it is off air. If people want to know, you can reach out. Michael Rubin, if you want to know, you can reach out too. But uh, no, I'll just say it. Miss Mouth's stain spray is clutch. Like Miss as in Miss, Mrs. Miss? M-I-S-S, -S, yes. Okay. CEO of Miss Mouth's is now going to invite you to their 
white party just for that. Did you see this photo? Is this Tom Brady passing the tor torch to Joe Burrow? Is that how you view it? Th that right there, to me, it was worth knowing that Joe went. Like just seeing him. You interact with Tom Brady. Like now you're – Joe, you got that, – that's company I like seeing. I think – and I, we'll probably do more on this at some point. If Joe Ball is out this year, like has the best year of his career, and I think expectations for a bunch of reasons should be pretty darn high like that, his star is going to be so – like there aren't – like he'll surpass Patrick Mahomes from a star standpoint. And, again, we can do more on that later. Mm. But he's he's on a very high scale, I think, star-wise. I mean, I, I think it's Travis Kelsey because of who he's dating, and then it might be Joe Burrow. I'm not sure there are many NFL stars mm. that are more popular than him. Yeah, Just yeah. throwing that out there now. We can do more on that later. But that's uh, – when you get into rooms like Joe is getting into right now, that's that's what happens. And by the way, Tom Brady went through the same phase. Now, the difference is, and this is what I can feel the comments, Brady got rings early. Burrow got this close, didn't get one. There's no time like the present, Andrew. We'll see if Joe Burrow can get a ring this year. Up next, the Bengals will induct two more legends into their ring of honor this season. Who will it be? We'll make our predictions next on Into the Jungle. Bengals Ring of Honor voting concluded last month, and we'll find out in the near future. Not sure exactly when, but in the near future, exactly who uh, the Bengals will induct into their Ring of Honor this year. Two inductees, Andrew, and, and I, I look at this list, and, and I know who I would induct, but you're a season ticket holder. Yep. I, I assume you voted. I know you, I you did. All right, so you voted. So are you willing to share who you voted for? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And by the way, not just season ticket holder, but inherited season tickets. So we're talking, we talk about year, year, the years of being a season ticket holder based on these tickets, you know, the votes count for per year, right? We're talking yep. like early eighties. So these okay. were some, these were some hefty votes here. I'm just going to throw that out there, but let, let me preface it with saying this then, because okay. you're talking to the guy who wrote the book, Enter the Jungle, who uh, yeah. this show was named after, yes. CincinnatiBengalsBook.com. You're talking to the guy who did all decade teams and knows mm -hmm. the Bengals pretty darn well. Right. There are wrong answers here that I could get on you for. Okay. Even though all 11 nominees should be in. And so I may get be critical of you here. So we'll see. Who did you I, – I really don't know who you voted for. And, and, and yeah, and you're talking to the guy who's – Votes. It was like, you know, counted for like 100 votes a pop. I don't even know. <laughs> remember how it worked out. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Ready? It, I, actually, no, no. Oh, my gosh. Because here's who I think is favored. Because I don't want it to match up with who you voted for. Yeah, yeah, facts are facts. I know who I voted for. It won't change it. I think the two that get in are Corey Dillon and Lamar Parrish. I think those are the two that will get in. Your prediction might come true because those were both of my votes. <laughs> Did you vote? Okay. Uh, yes. For what it's worth. I did consult with my father-in-law, the previous owner of the season tickets, and I wanted to make sure, like, you know, sort of his his thoughts on it were also being reflected in these votes. But this is that was my intent to make those two picks, and uh, he he agreed. So, yeah, I mean, I think w there aren't many defensive players that are potentially getting into the Ring of Honor yet, and we only have one today, right, with Ken Riley. So, even, that's just one little bonus to this, but I just wanted to point that out. Eight years with the Bengals and what, six Pro Bowls out of those eight with the Bengals? Granny played another handful of years, Washington um, and Buffalo, I think it was. But it, yeah, that, I mean, like 25 interceptions in his time with the Bengals, like you, that's it. Andrew, you, you don't need to make the case for Lamar Parrish. I, that's not the one I have a, a problem with. Really? The problem is everyone voting for Corey Dillon. Oh. Because, and I like Corey. I've met Corey multiple times. Go on. Just because Corey goes on this podcast tour last year yeah. and, and says how he's not feeling the love from Bengals fans, now everyone's got to love Corey Dillon and vote him in right now. No, the reason Corey shouldn't be in this year, he's one of the most recent. No, no, no. He's not better than Bob Trumpy. Bob Trumpy's the best tight end in Bengals history, and he's 80 years old. Time does matter. Trumpy sure. should have went in when Corey Dillon was a rookie. In 97. So we're playing catch up. I, and I'm surprised. Maybe I'm going to have to call your father in law and have a bone to pick with him because he clearly missed the, the, the bell here. He should have said, Oh, well, Corey Dillon has plenty of time to get in. And I don't 
without any of his I was there for the 278 game against the Broncos. I love Corey Dillon, and I think he should be in. It's not debating that, but can can Corey Dillon wait another year or two so a guy like Bob Trumpy can get in with Lamar Parrish? Sure. I think so. Could Should Max Montoya be in or David uh, David Fulcher, Tim Crumry? Or, yeah, yeah, like I, I look at those dudes, it's like, yes. like the, That's it. That's why it, it stunk that it took so long for Ken Riley. Ken Riley didn't get to see – see himself he came back in 2017 for the 50th year but he didn't get to see himself get inducted into the ring of honor i want these guys to be able to experience it and so that that's why Corey, if it were up to me you're not gonna have to wait you're gonna get in i know it but i'm fighting for these guys that are that are older that should have been in when you were still playing forget but them being around to see it. I agree with you. I would like that too. It's just not the way it works. Like look at the actual pro football hall of fame. It just, uh, I guess my, what I'm asking, what I want to ask you then is objectively, would you pick Corey Dillon with who we have out there right now, whether they're all there or they're all not there. Who, if they're who, all the same age is what yes. you're saying. No, I, I still think like if they played in the same era, you're yes. It, it, it's so tough because Bob Trumpy revolutionized the, the sport to mm -hmm. a degree, at tight end, what he did at tight end, the, the pass-catching ability that he had. You look at the numbers, and they don't wow you now, right. but, like, you're talking about a stud. Trumpy was one of the three finalists for me, and I ended up with Dylan and Parrish. So. I would I would probably still vote Trumpy. You're not wrong in voting Corey. Right. Right? You're certainly not wrong in voting Lamar Parrish, and I do think those are going to be the two that get in. That's going to do it for us. This yeah. week on Enter the Jungle. Every Tuesday at 8 Eastern, training camp right around the corner. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on Cincinnati Bengals Talk on YouTube. And for Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for watching Enter the Jungle.